And don't forget to follow me on Insta at yes or no. Oh, hello, YouTube. Didn't see you there. Okay, before I start, I have a question. Have you ever played the telephone game? Remember that game we used to play as kids? No, no, not on Nintendo, but in real life. You know, where one kid would whisper a message into another kid's ear, something along the lines of, Patrick likes Lily. And then that kid would whisper it down the line to another kid who would whisper it on to the next one until finally the kid at the end of the line would shout, Patrick licked my feet. You know, something that vaguely resembled the first message, but was very, very different. Yeah, so that game taught me everything about the internet. And not just that licking feet is also a thing online. <clears throat> because it is. <laughs> no, it kind of taught me what Instagram is teaching the next generation. What? How to scroll for hours? No, no. That anybody can be famous for doing absolutely nothing? <laughs> no! That when you upload an image to Instagram, it's untouched, right? But as soon as you add a filter and send it out to your hashtag squad, well, that image, it's now altered information. And sometimes it can be so altered that it's unrecognizable. Hey. Okay, this is getting too esoteric, so I'm gonna just spell it out for you. This is a metaphor for our news. Mind blown. With news, any information you're not getting from the source is filtered information. Right? It's being filtered through the eyes, minds, and big mouths of everybody on the TV and interwebs. Big mouths. Big mouths. Blah. And sometimes those big mouths are just as inaccurate as little kids in the telephone game. Now, sometimes filtered information is good. Right? Secondary sources help make lots of tough information easier to digest. But sometimes, even with honest intentions, people A. don't properly understand the source they're citing, B. use biased language that makes conjecture sound like truth, C. only give one side of the whole story, or D. etc. But sometimes, the misrepresentation of information isn't done honestly. Sometimes it's done dishonestly, with malicious intentions, a.k.a. fake news. Dun dun dun! Alright, so when you think fake news, think people twisting headlines to influence others because they know most people won't read their article. Or think people twisting their content to influence others because they have ulterior motives and they know most people won't fact check them. What ulterior motives could people have for spreading fake news, you ask? Oh, I don't know. N n nothing comes to mind. Essentially, fake news is like Regina George-type gossip, as played out in our Facebook news feed cycles. Oh gosh, this all sounds like a scarily predictive episode of Black Mirror. Mirror, mirror, Facebook wall, how do we avoid this all? Well, I hate to go all moral the story on you, but you can reduce misinterpretation by fact-checking yourself before you fact-wreck yourself. Translation, go back to the primary source. The unfiltered, unedited, dull primary source. Because that's the secret behind the cold, hard truth. It's boring. Think C-SPAN level boring. That's why most people don't fact-check. But you know what's not boring? Using your noggin to come to your own conclusions. Yeah, nobody wants to be a dummy. And you know what else isn't boring? Realizing how many layers of makeup the media has to cake on a story just to make it appealing for the mainstream masses. It's fascinating. In a terrifying way. But you know, after you've come to a few of your own conclusions on topics, then you get to play a little game of compare and contrast. Scrutinize the different sources that exist and decide which ones you think are most in line with the truth. Wow, what a fun game. 
Okay, okay, I get it. It's not hot potato or anything, but it definitely allows you to throw a little bit of faith into the hands of the secondary sources you trust so that you don't always need to labor over the details of every single event ever just in order to have an opinion on them. But of course, remember to always treat other people's views as you would a British meal. Take everything with a grain of salt. <laughs> always. Because really, and here comes the grand finale, when you think about it, life is just one big game of telephone. And when it comes to the information being disseminated, unless you're the person starting the message, there's a good chance you'll already have misunderstood it by the time you hear it. Speaking of messages, I think I've made my point clear. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at yes or no. Bye.